In our final example of inferior and normal goods and complements or substitutes, we'll approach things in a somewhat different way. Suppose I specify that I want you to draw a graph which has the following four characteristics as appears in the typewritten box in the upper part of the screen. I want you to show an example where the price of y increases, where x is an inferior good, where y is a normal good, and where x and y are substitutes. So I started with an old budget constraint, BC1, and a new budget constraint, which is, let's call it BC3, which shows a rise in the price of Y. When the price of Y rises, the affordable set has to shrink, and this affordable set does, and has to shrink in the Y direction. If you were to spend all your money on X, purchases would be unaffected, and so it pivots around the X intercept over here. The budget constraint pivots in that direction. So the motion from BC1 to BC3 is an shows the result of an increase in the price of Y. So we've got the first part of this. Easiest one to do next is the last one, X and Y are substitutes. Remember that the second and third, the inferior and normal stuff, has to do with income changes. There are no income changes here, so we're going to have to draw an imaginary budget constraint and stuff like that. But for substitutes and complements, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just go from the initial point to the final point. The initial point here is A. So let's work on X and Y being substitutes. So now that I and we we'll just ignore the the green line I've drawn there for right now. So let's draw dashed lines down from A. And I'll draw a dashed line to the left from A. So this divides BC3 into three different parts. If you would have drawn A a little bit more above and to the left, then the third part of BC3, this part over here, well, would not have existed because the dashed line would have gone up farther than where BC3 intersects BC1. But that's just those are just footnotes. X and Y being substitutes means they need to work in op move in opposite directions. Complements, they would go in the same direction. Substitutes, they go in opposite directions. So I claim that X and Y being substitutes means you, you must not be, I think I'll draw it this way, you must not be in this region here. Put the word no here. Because if you were in this region, then measuring from A, X would go down and Y would go down, so they'd be going in the same direction, so they'd be complements. So you can't be there. Any other place, they're going to be substitutes. To the right of point A, if you're at the point on BC3 to the right of point A, X will have gone up, but Y will have gone down, opposite direction, substitutes. And if you're at the part of BC3 above point A, X will have gone down, Y will have gone up, so again, opposite directions substitutes. So we can't be in the area that I marked by no. And that exhausts all the information that we can get from the fourth point. So now we do have to handle this business about inferior and normal goods. Inferior and normal has to do with income changes. There are no income changes in the graph right now. So you have to draw this green line. The green line is the imaginary budget constraint, call it. BC2, it's the imaginary budget constraint. And remember how it's drawn. The imaginary budget constraint is always drawn parallel to the new budget constraint and tangent to the original indifference curve. Original indifference curve is U0. And we have drawn it this way. Parallel to the new budget constraint tangent to the original indifference curve. So now that we have a parallel shift, we can locate point B 
on the graph, the consumer never knows anything about point B, but the economist does. And then the motion from B to some point on BC3 is going to be the income effect. We'll now draw lines from point B to help us measure the income effect. X is supposed to be a normal, an inferior good. An inferior good has the property that when income goes up, X would go down. But the motion from B to BC3, or if you wish from BC2 to BC3, is, is like a decrease in income. Of course, we know income hasn't actually changed, but it's like a decrease in income. So for an inferior good, if you had a decrease in income, then you need x to go up. Therefore, from point B, we need x to go up. In other words, we have to be to the right of point B at our final position. That takes care of the second criterion. The third criterion is that y is normal. The definition of a normal good is that if income increases, then consumption of the good increases. But here, the motion from B to BC3 is like an income decrease. And for a normal good, if income decreases, then consumption of the good has to decrease. So we need Y to decrease. So if I extend this line over to the vertical axis, then what we need is to be down below this point so that we have a decrease in y. The only portion of BC3 that satisfies both of these conditions, well actually there's just one portion that satisfies the condition on x and that's this portion. I'll say this is okay. You see that if it satisfies the condition on x then it automatically satisfies the condition on why? Because the point in the OK region, all the points in the OK region are below point B, which is what we needed for Y. So the conclusion is that we need to draw a graph which has the consumer starting at point A and ending up somewhere in this OK region of BC3. So I'll draw a freehand, something along the lines of this. Okay, so that new indifference curve is tangent over here in the OK region. I didn't draw it particularly well on this side. It's a bit uh, shaky, so that fixed it. But this, you, the reason I, I drew it close to U0 in the upper left around here is to show you that they actually put it this way they actually don't intersect so the new indifference curve is a legitimate indifference curve i'll probably should call it something else and call it u prime so it doesn't intersect with u not here's the other end u not u prime so they they don't intersect anyway they have the usual downward sloping convex shape and it intersects bc3 in the okay region so that finishes the example of the price of y increasing, x being an inferior good, y being a normal good, and x and y being substitutes.